God. John 4, verse 26. Jesus said, I am the Messiah. I am God, Mr. Jehovah Witness. Take that and stuff that in your magazine. Put that on every page. I am the Messiah. Put that on every page of the Watchtower. I am the Messiah. You know, when I met Jesus in April 1987, I met the Messiah. I met the one that's prescribed by God. Here is your prescription for your sin. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I knelt down and received God's prescription. And I got God's salvation. And upon this, he said, well, we'll skip down. Verse 28, The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and said to the men, That woman left the world behind. She left Jesus as a new person. She walked away from Jesus changed. She was no more interested in that worldly water. She had had, she had received the living water. And she leaves. She leaves for a reason. And she says to the men, Come see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? You know what I did when I, when I got up from that coffee table? I acknowledged Jesus Christ before four people in the room, maybe five, that Jesus Christ is my Savior. That was the first thing I'd done after I got saved. I told people that Jesus was the Savior. I've already really told you, the next day I went and told people about Jesus. Son, if you received Christ and you did not go witnessing, you did not testify, and with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation, I question your salvation. Because your salvation of God is going to make you want to go tell others. You know why I am here preaching to you? Because I have received the Messiah, I have received Jesus Christ, and I've gone to the men of the city and have told you just like this woman in John chapter 4. Jesus told everything about me. And he's telling me things, even things I didn't even know about me. This woman gets up as a witness. Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Jesus says unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, to finish his work. Say ye not, there are yet four months... And then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white, ready to harvest. He that reapeth, receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto eternal life eternal, that both he, and the, he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. Here is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I send you to reap... God has sent me to reap amongst a place where fruit has been harvested. <laughs> Isn't God funny? I am planting seeds where harvest has been picked. As you buy what has been harvested, I am planting the seed of the gospel in your heart. 
See, everything on these tables that are fruits and vegetables are going to die eventually. They're going to rot, and they're going to be cast out. Eventually, you're going to die, and if you rot, you're going to be cast out. You're going to perish. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in Him shall not perish. You got old rotting fruit, nobody's going to want it. And if you are your old rotting sitting nature, God don't want it. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman which testified, he told me all that he ever did. So when the Samaritans were come so when the Daytonans were come unto him, they besought him that he would carry it with them, and he bowed there two days. Anybody want to invite me to preach to you for two days? How many of you wearing a necklace or bracelet? What would Jesus do? He'd come preach to you for two days. You want to have a Friday farmer's market? I'll be here. Lord willing. And they said... Unto the woman. Now we believe. You know what I said unto you? Now you should believe. Not because of thy saying. You may not get saved. Because of what I say right now. I just may be planting. Someone may be harvesting in your life. Maybe I'm harvesting. You don't have to get saved right now. I, I mean, you should. But because of what I told you, maybe down the road, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, maybe next year, maybe, I don't know, but don't wait. Maybe you'll get saved because, you know what, I heard some guy say something about that a long time ago. I don't know. But the result of that woman brought the men of her town, her city, to Jesus. We have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior. I testify unto you what Jesus Christ has done for me. And I bring unto you God, Jesus Christ, and what he can do for you. I don't see any religions here. I don't see a drunk lying his own vomit because of it. Oh, oh, Jack Daniels did for me, people. Come buy more Jack Daniels. Oh, go, oh, oh, hey. Brave Jack Daniels. I don't see anybody doing that. I don't see any druggie up here declaring what heroin has done for his life. I don't see any guy involved in extreme sex up here telling about his diseases he got. I don't see anybody up here proclaiming the medical doctors how they saved him. Yeah, but I see on street corners across the USA the land, Las Vegas. California, New York, New Haven, Connecticut. I know places like that where the gospel has been or is or will be preached within the next hour or so. It's not a couple hours. I know the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ will be preached by ex heroin addicts, by ex drunkards, by ex sinners. Will be preached in the gospel, the glorious word of the Lord. not only change your de destination of where you're going to go when you die, but He is also able, and I'm not making this part, but He's also able to change your life if you are willing to make the change. Now, I'm still a sinner. 
and I will always be a sinner until the day I drop dead on the rapture. I'm going to sin. I'm not happy. I'm not proud of it. But John 1, 9 says, if I confess my sin, but I... On April 21st, 1987, I went to the heavenly ticket booth at Jerusalem. I went outside the gates to Calvary. I walked up to the cross. I said, Jesus, somehow, someway, I said, will you save this miserable Savior that I am? This guy here, Mr. Caswell, says, I'm a sinner. Will you save me? And Jesus on the cross said, It is finished! And my Savior died. He died on me. What am I going to do? The Pope died. Brigham Young died. They killed Joseph Smith. Priests died. What are you going to do? And a woman named Mary said, Come with me, son. Where are we going? We're going to the graveyard. Oh, yes. Yeah. All right. Let's go to the graveyard. Just sit and wait with me, son. Be patient. That's a sin of mine. I have no patience. You want to test my sin ability? Come with me. Sit in the pastor's seat at a red light. I'll show you my sins. And in the graveyard, I sat, and I waited, and then a light came into my life. The one that said, he is, he, it is finished to me, had a glorious newspaper article of a headline that said, he's not here, he is risen. And do you know what makes Jesus Christ more important in your life than any other man? His body's not in his tomb no more. That Christ, that God that I said saved me, that died, arose from the grave. In Acts chapter 1, you know what he tells me? I am seated at the right hand of the Father. And you know what his apostle told me? He says, you're not going to heaven. I said, no. I said this prayer. I'm not. He says, no. He says, Starry Hayward, you're not going to heaven. He says, you are already there. He says, you are seated in heavenly places by the testimony that Jesus Christ died for your sin, was buried, and he arose the third day. You are not going to heaven. You are there already. The body hasn't made it yet. You know what I can tell you about eternal security? Because I'm there. And the day I die, the day the rapture happens, I'm all there. That is the gospel. That is the personal testimony of a woman who lived about 2,000 years ago, longer, that met Jesus Christ, walked away saved, and went to her town and said, let me tell you about Jesus. And that town came, and they received Jesus. Things have changed. I have brought to this town, to this city, trying, Lord willing, week after week after week, to bring you Jesus Christ. And I'm done.